Hi there, it's Dave with House Flipping Spreadsheet and this is going to be a quick tutorial and case study on how you can use the House Flipping Spreadsheet Lite version to analyze a rehab deal to determine the maximum purchase price you should offer for a property. So basically the way that this Lite version spreadsheet is broken down is it's broken down into really three components. You're first going to set up the project on the project setup sheet, then you're going to complete a detailed repair estimate to figure out what the repair costs are going to be for the property. Then you're going to move on to the analyze stage, which you're going to use to analyze the maximum purchase price you should offer for the property. So first, when you open up the spreadsheet, you'll want to go to the project setup page. The project setup page is really where you're going to set up the property information, such as the property address, property street information, number of beds, baths, after repair value, project information, and financing information. Everything that you see here in the yellow boxes is an area where you can input data entry. So we are just going to start inputting some information here for you, just so you can see how it operates. Everything that you see over here on the left hand side that says suggested but not required with this little exclamation point, you don't necessarily have to fill that information in. That information on the premium versions of the spreadsheets will be fed over to the professional reporting options that we have. So you don't necessarily need to fill this in on the light version, but it's there for you just so you can track which project, what street address, and property you're actually working on. Okay, now that we've input our property information, we'll need to input our project information. The project information is really going to have to do with the project schedule and your holding costs. So this project schedule over here on the left hand side is going to be used to calculate the overall holding costs and holding period that you're going to have for the project. So you're going to input the rehab schedule in the number of months. So on this project, we are going to be rehabbing the project for two months. And then we think that the property is going to take about three months to sell it on the market. So once we put it on the market, it's going to take us three months to get a buyer and bring that property to close and hand over the keys to the end buyer. So now our total project schedule is going to be five months. That five months will be used to multiply by your monthly holding costs. So over here on the right hand side is where you'll input your monthly holding costs such as your taxes, your monthly insurance costs, your maintenance that you'll be paying for lawn mowing, snow removal, stuff like that, and then your utilities. So once you do that, you'll actually just move on to the financing information. If you are an all cash investor, you can really just move on to the next, next phase of the analysis. Or if you're going to be using a lender or a private money lender or a bank to finance the purchase of the property, then you can select financed and you'll see that a little drop down menu appears for you to input your financing information. Under the financing amount, you've got a cell here where you can input a specific loan amount or there's actually a drop down menu where you can use calculated amounts from the drop down menu. Purchase price only is going to be the calculated maximum purchase price. So if you wanted a loan for just the purchase price of the project, you would select purchase price only. Repair costs is another calculated amount, which is based upon the estimated repair costs that you put together on the repair cost estimator. All costs would be obtaining financing for the purchase price and the repair costs and any upfront buying costs and any non-financing holding costs. So that's essentially all costs associated with buying, purchasing, rehabbing, and holding the property. 
after repair value is going to be based upon the after repair value that you select an input up top which is going to be your resale value so you could get a loan for a percentage of the after repair value once you select all costs the spreadsheet will automatically calculate what your loan amount is going to be based upon the variables this is a pending amount pending your maximum purchase price analysis so this number over here will change based upon the numbers that you put together for your repair costs and what ultimately what that maximum purchase price value is calculated at. So then you can input your down payment amount. So if you're going to have a down payment, select yes or no, and then input the percentage over here. Input your annual percentage rate that you'll be paying to your lender. Whether you're going to be paying those interest payments monthly or whether they're going to be rolled into the back end of the loan. So if they're going to be rolled into the back end of the loan, that means that those monthly loan payments, you won't pay those up front on a monthly basis, will be added to the balance of the loan when you sell the property. Points, you can pay points up front on the loan, loan origination fees. And again, you can roll those points into the loan balance or you can pay those up front. And that will affect your cash outlay and amount of cash that you'll have to bring to the table to pay up front for initiating the loan. We also do have an option for a profit split. So if you wanted to do a profit split with a lender um, or a business partner, you could input the amount of profit that you and your partner will be splitting. And it'll automatically calculate what your profit share is going to be based upon the profit amount that you'll see over there on the maximum purchase price calculator. So once you do that, you'll actually move on to the next stage of the analysis, which is going to be the estimate. So you're going to put together a detailed repair estimate on the project. Our repair estimator is pre-built with 24 scopes of work, and each of those scopes of work have common work items that you would typically see on a rehab project. These common work items are actually pre-built with their own cost database, so you'll see typical cost items in there as well, which will help you put together detailed cost estimates for your projects. So I'm just going to run through a quick estimate here on a rehab project that generally just needs an interior finish out. Um, so on this project, we are going to be installing, we are going to be requiring a little bit of demolition work. So uh, we are going to be providing one dumpster to the project. Um, the demolition is fairly light demolition, but usually I estimate those costs at a cost per, per hour. So I'm going to throw in 80 hours of demolition work. If you continue down, uh, we won't really have any structural concrete work, concrete or flat work, masonry or siding, decking or roofing. For the most part, the property on the exterior of the property is in decent condition. Um, we will probably end up doing um, a few improvements to the landscaping out front. So generally, I, I typically just throw in a lump sum amount for the landscaping. So generally, you can spend about $300 to $500 on landscaping materials and really freshen up the look of a, a three-bedroom, two-bath house. And then I'll throw a couple hundred dollars in there for labor, for landscaping. As far as exterior improvements are concerned, that's really the bulk of the exterior improvements that we're going to plug in for this project. Um, we are going to be remodeling the kitchen. So you can see here we've got a cabinets and countertop section. We've gone into the property and we've taken off the amount of lineal footage of the cabinets. Um, so we're just plugging in our lineal footage and it's automatically multiplying out those costs based upon your labor rates and your unit prices for material, you can adjust these unit prices as necessary. So for example, on the stone countertops down below, we have about 30 square feet of countertops, uh, but we think we're probably going to end up putting in a $55 a square foot countertop in this property. So we, we can increase that unit rate and adjust those prices as necessary for our project. We are also doing a bathroom remodel on this project. So I'm just going to plug in some new vanity cabinets here. Um, those vanity cabinets actually really kind of include the countertops with those. So I'm good with that $500 unit price. Um, as far as doors and interior trim, 
we are not going to be touching too much of that. We are going to be installing new door hardware on all of the interior doors. So I'm going to plug in some new door hardware. Carpeting, we are going to be putting in new carpeting throughout the, the property. So I'm going to plug in about uh, 100 square yards, which should be about uh, 900 square feet of new carpet. The kitchen is receiving some new hardwood flooring. So I'm going to go down here to our hardwood flooring section, and that's about 250 square feet there. We're going to go with an average grade hardwood floor. So you can see how that's, we've got some different pricing options in there for you for the hardwood flooring. And then in the kitchen, we're also going to be doing a pretty nice backsplash. It's going to be a custom mosaic tile backsplash, and that's about 30 square feet of that. And we've got a pretty expensive cost per square foot for that uh, material there as well uh, but we're going to go with a pretty high-end backsplash to really make that pop the bathrooms again are getting remodeled so we're going to put all new shower tile in the bathrooms and then on the floors we're going to do that as well and then we do have some miscellaneous tile that we have at the front entry of the property painting we are going to be painting the entire property throughout uh, sometimes I'll just throw in a lump sum number for the labor because based upon my cost history, you can paint a three bedroom, two bath um, of the exterior of the property for a couple thousand dollars and then the interior of the property for another couple thousand dollars. So I'm just going to plug in a lump sum amount there and then I'm going to be buying the paint for them. So I'm just going to plug in 25 gallons or so of paint at 35 bucks a gallon. And then I'm going to move on to the next section here. This is going to be our appliances section, so you can choose between your different appliances on the project. So we're going to go with an average grade refrigerator, average grade uh, range, and dishwasher. And then let's throw in an appliance delivery from Lowe's. As far as plumbing is concerned, again, we're really just kind of touching the kitchens and the bathroom. So we are going to be installing a new kitchen faucet, a new garbage disposal, um, a new dishwasher hookup, water supply line for the refrigerator, two new bathroom faucets, a shower stall, and then we're going to have one tub, and then we're going to have two toilets and a shower kit. On the HVAC side, everything's in, in fairly good shape. Um, the, the equipment itself is in good shape, but we're going to actually just throw in some money for a light tune-up and service to that equipment. And on the electrical side, um, we are going to be installing new light fixtures throughout the property, new fans, um, lights in the, in the bathroom. So we've got some new track lights that we're going to install in the kitchen. There's going to be a new chandelier light. We've got about five dome lights throughout the property that we're going to be installing. We've got three bedrooms that we're going to be installing new fan fixtures in, and we've got two new vanity lights and then two new exterior lights. The last section is just miscellaneous items, so you can just plug in whatever you want down here, but it's really just for bathroom accessories and mirrors and then window coverings. So now you can see we put together a pretty detailed repair estimate for this project in probably about five minutes. So you can see how powerful the repair cost estimator can be for you and your business to make sure that you're putting together detailed re repair cost estimates and make sure that you're not necessarily missing anything on those estimates. So this will be a helpful tool for you to create detailed scopes of work and estimates for your projects. Once you get done with your repair estimate, you can move on to the rehab analyzer. The rehab analyzer is going to be the overall dashboard that you use to analyze the maximum purchase price that you should offer for the property. So up here in the upper left hand corner is where you can, your after repair value will feed over from the initial info sheet where you set that information up. And that after repair value is going to be what you think you can resell the property for. But basically what the spreadsheet does and this dashboard does is it takes your after repair value and subtract your total fixed costs, subtract your total estimated repair costs, your repair contingency, and rehab profit to give you your maximum purchase price. 
So you can see how this overall dashboard can help you visualize how all of these costs are going to come together, visualize your profitability, and see how that affects your maximum purchase price that you're going to offer for the property. So let's run through each of these sections really quick and show you some of the different tools and features that you can implement in the, in the rehab analyzer. So the first section of the fixed costs is going to be your buying costs. So these are going to be your costs associated with buying or purchasing the property. So your brokerage fee, your inspection costs, if you're going to pay an inspector up front to inspect the property for you, um, title, insurance, and searches. Um, and then these closing costs and points actually feed over from those financing costs that you set up on the info sheet. So then it calculates what your total buying costs are going to be for the project. Your holding costs are going to be your costs associated with holding the property. So that's going to be your loan payments that you have to pay to your lender, your property taxes, utilities, insurance. All of this information here was actually set up on the info sheet. So you can see how it's using your total holding period and multiplying that by your monthly holding costs to give you your total holding costs for the project. The selling cost section is the final fixed cost section and these costs are associated with selling the property. So these are going to be your realtor's commissions, which is basically multiplying this percentage by your resale value, seller assisted closing costs, costs that you'll in concessions that you may have to give to the buyer um, up front in order to just solicit them and get them to buy your property, just to encourage them to buy your property. Um, brokerage fees, home warranties that you want to uh, provide for the end buyer title insurance so you can see how all of these costs here get added up to get your total selling costs for the project and then down at the bottom it totals all of your fixed costs so your buying costs your holding costs and your selling costs to give you your total fixed costs real quick if if you didn't want to go through that detailed analysis of the fixed costs you could actually skip that all together and you could just calculate your fixed costs based upon a percentage of the after repair value. So a lot of investors, if they want to do a quick analysis, they'll use the 70% rule, which basically allocates 30% to his fixed costs and his rehab profit. So using this tool, you can quickly allocate 15% to your fixed costs of the ARV and then 15% of your profit to the ARV. So that way you're offering the your offer price at exactly 70% of the after repair value. So you can input whatever percentage you want here to quickly calculate those fixed costs. So if you've got historical cost data that suggests that you usually pay 10% fixed costs on your projects, you could plug in 10% here and that would adjust that value down here at the bottom for you to reflect 10% of the after repair value. And then real quick, if you want to toggle back to the detailed costs, you can just select the detailed costs from the drop down menu and that will reestablish your detailed costs that you put together for the project. The repair estimate information feeds over from the detailed repair estimator. So all of this information that you see here is just summary information that feeds over from the detailed repair estimator in the estimate information you put together. Well, let's say that you don't want to put together a detailed estimate and you want to just put in a lump sum number or a lump num sum number for each scope of work. Well, we've created a special tool in here which will allow you to basically skip over the detailed analysis of the repair. So if you just want to plug in some lump sum numbers for each scope of work, you could do, just do that here. So you could just plug in $1,000 for your general conditions. $1,500 for demolition, uh, $1,000 for demo. You can just quickly plug in those numbers instead of going through that detailed repair estimate process. If you want to be even quicker with your repair estimate, you can input one lump sum number in the total repair estimate cell to just input one lump sum value for the repairs. So that can be a quick way for you if you've got a bid from a contractor or maybe you have a lot of experience and you know uh, what a typical three bedroom, two bath property takes to rehab, you could plug in a quick repair estimate right there in that cell. To restore your detailed costs, just simply go back up to the detailed costs on the drop down menu 
and select detailed. Down below you can add in your contingency. So contingency is going to be extra costs that you're going to add on to your repair estimate to cover any unforeseen conditions or issues that may arise on the project. So depending on your, your project experience, your flipping experience, um, and your overall comfort level with the scope of work on the project, you may want to allocate a certain percentage to your repairs. So generally, I would recommend you input a 5 to 10% contingency. And if you really don't have a lot of experience estimating repair costs, you may even want to go up to 15, up to 25%. So that's going to cover anything that you may not have thought of or anything that's unforeseen that may arise on the project. So you can use these buttons here to quickly input that percentage. You could also just allocate $5,000 in here if you wanted to. So you've got some flexibility there for adding in your repair contingency. Up in the right hand corner is going to be your rehab profit. So your rehab profit is really where you can establish how much profit you want to make on the project. So the profit is really based upon a percentage of the after repair value. So you can use these buttons here to quickly toggle and see how these percentage of profits affect your overall maximum purchase price and your overall profitability. Or if you want to just plug in one lump sum number, you can do that as well. So the final number that is calculated by the rehab annual analyzer is going to be the maximum purchase price. So again, it's just taking the after repair value, subtracting your total fixed costs, your total repair costs, your total contingency, your total rehab profit to give you your maximum purchase price. Over here down below is the 70% rule ticker, which basically is showing you how your offer compares to the 70% rule. So if we were to increase our maximum purchase price amount, you can see how that affects the ticker here, which is reflecting what we're actually purchasing the property for as a percentage of the ARV. So the 70% rule is a well-established and recognized rule by rehab investors that they use to determine the maximum purchase price they should offer for the property. It's just generally a rule of thumb that says uh, you should offer 70% of the after repair value and then subtract out your repair costs to give you your maximum purchase price. So this is just showing you how, what percentage you are offering for the property and how that compares to the 70% rule. So right now we're offering a little bit over the 70% rule, but we feel pretty comfortable because we've done a detailed analysis of all the fixed costs and repair costs. So we feel comfortable with that 70% offer price. Um, finally, the investment breakdown is where it's going to show you how much cash, how much financing and how much capital is going to be required to finance the project. So the cash investment is going to be based upon really your financing terms that you set up up front. So on the info sheet, we had originally stated that we were going to get financing for the project. We weren't going to pay a down payment. Our interest was going to be paid monthly. And if we pay it monthly, that really means that we're kind of paying it up front before we actually see the proceeds of the sale. So that's going to be coming out of our cash on hand. And then we're also paying the lender points up front. So that's going to be coming out of our cash on hand. So that's what our cash investment is going to be. It's going to be our total interest that we're going to be paying up front and then our total points amount. So you can see over here, our total cash investment for the project is $9,566. Our financed amount is going to be all of the costs associated with the project. So it's going to be your buying costs, your holding costs, your repair costs, your repair contingency, and your purchase price. But it's not going to be your selling costs because your selling costs are costs that are going to be paid for out of the proceeds of the sale. So when you actually sell the property, these costs here are actually going to be paid out of escrow. So you won't actually be paying this out of your cash. It'll be paid out of the proceeds of the sale. So then your total cash plus your financed investment gives you your total capital required for the project. And again, you'll see that the total investment's going to be more than your capital required because the capital required is just costs that you're going to be paying up front. It doesn't include the selling costs 
over here because those are going to be paid out of the proceeds of the sale. If you were to add that $14,000 to this 143, it would give you your total investment of $157,500. So this is an overall dashboard that you can use to help you analyze and visualize how you're going to purchase the property, all the costs that are associated with the project, and how profitable the project's going to be. Uh, once you actually do this analysis, you will make an offer for the property and hopefully you'll get the property under contract and you'll be able to make a nice little profit on your rehab pro project. Uh, once you actually do get a pro project under contract, you may want to consider upgrading to our premium versions of the spreadsheet. So we do have some nice reporting options for you. So on the deal analysis side, we've got some investment reports which really summarize all of those detailed analysis that we put together on the rehab analyzer. There's some lender presentation reports, some alternative exit strategies such as the wholesale calculator. There's a rental calculator and some rental spreadsheets in there as well. Then we've got some project management tools and reports. There's a project scheduler. We've got some checklists and different reports that you can use on the project management side to streamline and organize that process. And then on the accounting side, we've got a, some budgeting tools, an expense tracker, some forecasting tools, and we've got a lot of budget reports, expense reports, and final profit statements that you can use to help organize and streamline the entire process from the initial deal analysis all the way through the final profit statement and the final check that you receive from the end buyer. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any additional questions about the light version or any other products or services that we provide, feel free to shoot us an email or give us a call. Appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.